This iPhone 14 Pro Max didn't even survive six months. Its last owner certainly didn't take very good care of it. It suffered an impact from the back with such a force it snapped the stainless steel frame, but also shattered and pushed the screen away from the housing of the phone. Apple quotes an estimated cost of almost $1,150 for what I assume is actually just a replacement phone. So we're going to do it ourselves, hopefully for a lot less than Apple wants us to pay. After you see what it takes to repair an iPhone, you'll understand why most, including Apple themselves, wouldn't repair an iPhone this damaged. There isn't much on the outside of this phone that isn't damaged. While it still works, it's unusable as of the razor sharp shattered glass. To begin our repair, I'll first shut down the iPhone 14 Pro Max before removing its two Apple security pentalobe screws from the bottom of the device. Next, it's time to remove the display. You could use Apple's own official fixture, but despite owning one, mine doesn't actually work, nor do the heat pockets fit such a bent phone. So I'll be sticking to my trusty heat plate, placing the phone on for several minutes on the highest setting. This is done to soften the adhesive that helps secure the display onto the device. If you have a good working display or intact housing, I'd always recommend a suction cup to lift up the display. However, as we'll be replacing both, I can use a metal tool, as really, I don't think I can damage the phone much further. After separating the display using my plastic picks, I can fold the screen towards the left. There are two cables that we need to detach before the display can come free. However, there's a metal bracket in the way. So using my tri-wing security bit, I can remove the screws holding it in place. Of course, before doing anything else, I'll unplug the battery as soon as possible to avoid any damage to the logic board. Once the display is free, we get our first good look inside the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It seems the only damage to this phone was external, as everything inside looks brand new. While the cheaper iPhone 14 model was the first iPhone to see a removable back glass, its more expensive counterpart, the iPhone 14 Pro, doesn't have this feature. Meaning to repair the damage to the rear glass, we need to replace the whole back housing. Therefore, we need to remove every single component of the phone and transplant it into the new frame. For most phones, that wouldn't be all that difficult for a repair technician. However, for the iPhone, it has so many different screws, cables, and tiny microscopic bits and pieces compared to any other phone I've seen on the market. That makes this one of the most complicated phones to repair. Once I've removed the logic board, I can proceed to the lower section. Here, I'll remove the speaker and vibration motor, making sure to unplug it before it's removed. Up at the top, I can pull out the Face ID sensor. At this point, I notice the bend in the frame has caused the camera bracket to come free from one of its screws. I'll remove the bracket to gain access to the cameras, which I'll put aside for later. Under the cameras is Apple's LiDAR focusing system. One screw is all it takes to get it out. It looks intact, but has shards of glass all over, so it'll need a clean before it goes back in. It's finally come time to remove the battery, one of the last large components remaining inside the phone. It has four stretch release adhesive strips we need to remove. Tweezers are the best way to pull them out, however, it's important to keep them flat as they break very easily. They're not too bad with plenty of clearance, but up at the top, there's barely enough of the tweezers to fit. Some people praise this system, but I feel you're more likely to stab the battery, possibly igniting it. That being said, most phone makers today use too much adhesive, making these phones harder to repair. Thankfully, this iPhone's battery came free without too much trouble. It's not uncommon to see phone makers like Samsung holding their charge port, vibration motor and speaker with just six Phillips screws. Apple uses 21, many of which are different lengths or driver types, requiring you to change driver bits many times to remove not just the charge port, but most things inside the iPhone. This makes repair more complex, 
time consuming and adds confusion when it comes time to reassemble. With all the screws removed, the charging port can be unadhered and removed from the frame. We're slowly working our way down to the finer parts, with an antenna to come out next. Proceeding, I can remove the LED flash flex cable, which also houses a microphone and another antenna. There is yet another microphone attached to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna, which I'll now also remove. Proceeding, I can unfasten the mute switch, volume and power button. The power button is hidden behind a thin piece of plastic that recesses into the frame. On the US model, there'd be a 5G antenna there. All buttons are connected to the wireless charging coil, which we'll need to remove next to be able to free the entire assembly. Using some isopropyl alcohol will help soften its adhesive. Underneath is Apple's MagSafe magnets, and you bet they have to come out. More isopropyl alcohol and prying freeze them, one by one. But it's not just the ring of magnets, there's another large one below it. And can you believe it? There's still more to take out. That includes each button spring and retaining clip, along with the button itself. There's also the mesh grill for the earpiece and front microphone, which is new to the iPhone 14 series. Yet another added component to this housing replacement. But there's still a few more pieces, one of which is this plastic deflector for the earpiece speaker. It's got some serious glue holding it in. While we're at it, we'll also grab the microphone mesh that's sitting right next to it. Down at the bottom, it's a similar story with the speaker deflector. Isopropyl alcohol has little to no effect on this type of glue. It's so strong, I'm flexing portions of the frame. Eventually though, I managed to break it free from the frame. It does have a few battle wounds to show for it, but nothing that will stop us from reusing it. Under the piece of plastic is the mesh grills for the speaker ports. These microscopic pieces will need to come with us to our new frame. There's also two more on the other side of the device that are secured under pieces of plastic. If you're doing a repair like this, be sure not to sneeze or breathe too hard because they will fly away. With that, there's only three more things that need to come out. A plastic bracket for the rear camera microphone. Two brackets which are responsible for holding the front display in place and the SIM eject pin. With that, we've now completely disassembled the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Just look at everything we took out. Without this magnetic mat, there is no way I could put this back together. With that, it's now time to unpack our new housing and start the reassembly process. I find it easier to reassemble as you're not so worried about breaking something that would take time and money to replace. The biggest hurdle is making sure you've put everything back right with its correct screws. One way to improve the repair experience of an iPhone is to purchase another one broken to use as parts or buy a housing with some of the parts already installed. This can save you so much time and hassle, completely skipping the need to remove every micro piece of the phone. But it has its own drawbacks. Firstly, it costs more not that any replacement parts are cheap for the latest iPhone model, 
but you can also find replacement housings that come with parts that are incorrectly installed or have missing pieces such as the mesh from the speaker grills. That can make the phone look like it was poorly repaired. It's time for this iPhone's MagSafe magnets to be glued in place. Given their magnetic properties, they tend to move about, so you have to keep an eye on them until the glue starts to set. It looks a bit messy for now, but we'll clean it up once the glue starts to set. For now, I'll continue putting the pieces back together. Some of the smaller things need a little glue to help hold them in place, like the speaker deflectors and earpiece grill. As long as I don't get any glue in the perforations, sound will still travel through just fine. Here is something a surgeon and a good phone repairer have in common. Steady hands and mad tweezer skills. That's what's needed to put these speaker grills in place. After the mesh is installed, I can attach the deflector and its rubber grommet. Back on the old housing, I'll salvage these gold tabs which I'll transfer to our new frame. They sit behind the Face ID module and I presume it helps it get a good ground connection. Before the wireless charging coil goes in, I'll clean up the glue residue as best I can. Using some liquid adhesive around the edges of the module, it can be then positioned into place. A good tip to get the mute switch installed is to make sure the switch is set to ringer before attaching the metal switch cover. You'll notice it has two pins either side. Operating the switch and placing it into silent, you can see the button is now held in place, so it can be easily aligned into the frame, allowing me to secure it and the volume buttons in place. Testing, you can see it works just fine. The other side, however, was not fine. The screw threads wouldn't accept the screws. We'd gotten so far in this repair, I wasn't about to give up or deal with a non-functional power button because of this. So I looked through my screw box to find something that would work. And to some amazing miracle, I found two screws that tightened up. They had clearly messed up the screw threads on this housing, but at least I was able to find a solution. Thankfully, none of the other screws so far have caused us any issues. What do you guys think of this iPhone's repairability? For those wondering why I didn't use Apple's self-service repair option, the answer is simple. They don't stock iPhone 14 parts, and it isn't any cheaper than just taking the phone to Apple. So, why even bother doing the repair yourself? Doing it yourself is not an easy undertaking but when we add up the cost of our third-party replacement parts used to fix this phone, you might just see the value in it. With the last of the tiny components in, it's time for some of these larger components, such as the charging port. Remember that array of screws that we took out earlier? Well, I now have to try and figure out where they all went. Thankfully, I used a magnetic mat, which helped me organize the parts out and made this reassembly process a lot easier. Proceeding, it's time we cleaned up the LiDAR sensor. I scraped away the larger particles of glass and then used the old battery adhesive to pick up the rest. Now, it can be put into the phone. Next to go in is the Face ID module, followed by the logic board. At last, our phone is starting to take shape. Once the earpiece is installed, it's time for the cameras. It's not uncommon to see factories mark the protective film on the lens to ensure you remove it prior to installing the cameras. However, in this case, they marked the lens prior to installing the protective film in them. 
Not only does that defeat the purpose of having the film to stop the lenses from becoming dirty, but now I have to remove this blue dye otherwise the cameras won't take clear images. With everything good to go, I can now fasten the bracket into place and connect the camera's two flex cables. At this point, it's time to prep our battery for installation. I'll apply some new battery adhesive to the back of the battery before installing it into the phone. Before we can attach the display, we first need to apply a new adhesive seal around the perimeter to help keep out dust and water from the phone. We also need to transfer the old proximity sensor cable from the destroyed screen to our new one. Using some heat will help soften the adhesive which holds this cable in place. Can you guess how much our new display cost? 557 Australian dollars or around 370 US. That's no cheap display and I'm sure it will come down significantly in price as the phone ages but because this is the newest model iPhone the parts are astronomically inflated. With our screen now ready to go I can attach its two flex cables before the battery. There's only one more bracket left before we can test out this iPhone 14 Pro Max to see if all our hard work has paid off. Closing the display and pressing the power button, we can see the iPhone spring into life. But don't get too excited just yet. Apple doesn't approve of our unauthorized repair, so they've taken away true tone and auto brightness. How do they know? Well, components like our display have a chip on the back which tells the phone its serial number. Each screen has its own unique serial number, so Apple knows we swap the display. If you think that's crazy, be sure to check out the iPhone 14 teardown and repair assessment video for an in-depth look at this very practice. But for this phone, now that everything's checked out, we can proceed in sealing down the display to the frame. After firmly pressing the display down into place, I can remove the protective film from the edges of the device so that I can install the SIM card tray and the two pentalobe screws into the bottom of the device. From there, there's only one thing left to do. Remove the plastic protective film from both the back of the phone and the front display. And we're done. So this is it, a fully repaired iPhone 14 Pro Max. The most complex repair to the least repair friendly phone. Even after the four and a half hours this phone took to repair and the 500 US dollars in new parts, our true tone and auto brightness are held ransom as we did not opt to pay Apple for the repair. No matter how perfect the repair, Apple's iOS software will throw errors and make it appear as you did something wrong when in most cases, nothing is wrong with your new part at all. Even if you swap parts from two brand new iPhones like I've proven before. While filming the outro shots, I thought the phone had died, but actually the screen had just defaulted to 0% brightness. With no auto brightness, it wasn't able to adjust to the lighting conditions, so it was impossible to see the display, even with my studio lights off. Blindly adjusting the brightness using muscle memory brought the phone back. Unfortunately, that's the reality of iPhone repairs. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.